What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more video game music. Indeed, I've been trying to get back to this playlist uh, a bit more frequently. Uh, and we're going to listen to a tune from the original Castlevania game. Um, I got a Nintendo, it probably was around 84, 85. Um, yeah, I, it was not like right when the Nintendo came out, but it was shortly after that. Um, and, you know, all the classic games that people know I played a lot, although maybe The Legend of Zelda, the least of the the classic staples of the early Nintendo era. But I definitely played a lot of uh, Castlevania. I played a lot of Simon's Quest, too, the second one, which I know has a much more mixed reputation. It, you know, admittedly, I never beat it back in the day. It was, you know, there were too many clues that were opaque and unclear. And, you know, as I learned, you know, watching people beat it on the internet in later years, there were some parts that I probably never would have figured out as a kid. Uh, but the first game is much more straightforward. It's just, you know, run to the right and you know, destroy the monsters. Um, so yeah, uh, I enjoyed the first game. Um, I didn't, I'm trying to remember, I think I actually owned the second one first, I'm not sure. Um, but basically, I didn't play the first one as much, but I do remember um, beating it. And I remember thinking when I beat it, like, oh my god, like, I don't know if I'd ever be able to do that again. Um, it's definitely like a hard platforming game. And one of the most difficult levels features the track we're going to hear, which is called Wicked Child. And I think maybe this is the most famous uh, track from the soundtrack. Uh, the opening tune, which I'm trying to remember the name of that one. Um, the tune that plays at the very beginning of the very first level. Um, that, I think, is another quite popular tune, but Again, I've heard this tune remixed um, by more producers over the years than any other track. Um, although perhaps um, there's another tune from the second game that I think has been remixed quite a bit too. We'll talk about that more when we get there. Um, but I did want to give a shout out to Yamashita Kinyo, um, female producer. This was her first work. Uh, I think she worked for Konami for a number of years, eventually began making com compositions as like an independent composer. Um, I think she lives in the United States now. Um, there's a another producer that's given credit, although again, I think uh, Yamashita Kunio, or Kinyo, sorry, is the was the lead composer. Let me see. Um, yeah, with Sato Terashima or Terashima Sato is also given credit. I didn't realize this, but in the American version of the game, um, Yamashita Kinyo is credited under the name James Banana which I guess is a play on James Bernard, the composer of the 1958 Dracula film. So, uh, yeah, the bottom line, we're going to listen to uh, Yamashita Kinyo and Terashima Sato and their track, Wicked Child. Uh, so let me cue it up. And this, like a lot of video game music recordings from the early days, uh, what it does is it plays the, whatchamacallit, the main run of the 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 track twice and then it fades it because again these were loops like they would just loop endlessly until you beat the level um, so this plays the loop twice and then it fades it so here we go uh, Yamashita Kinyo and Terashima Sato from the original Castlevania game and the track is Wicked Child <laughs> Doubling to the base. I love that. 
the main parts of the game where they play this. It's this hallway of knights. And you gotta be on point. And it's like, I was thinking about it, you know, some of the, the games that um, are rightly very popular, the Super Mario Brothers, the, you know, Usually, I think the game that came with the system certainly it was for me, um, as well as Mega Man Two, another game I love. They're very beatable. Um, again, if you like really don't know what you're doing, I suppose you know you can run out of lives. But those games they sort of set them up to be very beatable. Uh, Castlevania, Ninja Gaiden, fuck off! Like those games, you gotta be a legit pro. And like I feel like you know, over the years I played other games like Halo games. I've been very good at for a long time. There was a period like in my twenties where like I played a lot online, playing against other like really good people. I could hold my own, whatever. But like I'm telling you, like either back in the day, even now, I've beaten Ninja Gaiden and I've beaten Castlevania. Um, in recent years, but it's with the save state where you can like, okay, I got through that really tough part, I didn't die, I'm gonna save it here, and then now I'll play this next part of the level, and if I die, I can just reload that part where I still have that many lives and I'm still at that part of the level. You couldn't do that back in the day. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That I feel like the people who programmed the difficulty of both the Castlevania games and the Ninja Gaiden games were psychotic. But in a way, they're like more legendary because, you know, like very few people beat them. I mean, even beating it with save state, like, um, admittedly, I'm thinking of Ninja Gaiden a little bit more. Uh, but the end of Castlevania, there's multiple forms of Dracula. And the, you know, the second form is like much more difficult. Um, but it's the same in Ninja Gaiden. There's like three forms of the last guy. And like, you still have to beat them. Like, you can save state up to that point. But like, once you get into the battle, you can't like, I'll save state while I'm jumping and attacking at it. You can't really do that. So like, you know, I still had to beat the end bosses. And I remember like, when I beat them, I was like, dude, I like, I don't even feel bad that as a kid, I never beat these. They're still like hard as hell to play now. So, um, yeah, legendary game, really good soundtrack. Again, like for a debut soundtrack, it's amazing. Um, you know, I, I feel like over the years, it's a soundtrack that I've known is good, and, but I haven't played all the games, you know, like Symphony of the Night, like all these different Castlevania games. I only really played the original ones. Um, yeah, I think the first three are the ones that I know. And I, like, I think I saw someone play the Super Nintendo one a little bit. Uh, regardless, um, big shout out to uh, Yamashita Kinyo and big shout out to, what is it, Terashima Sato. Um, yeah, just a really cool tune. As I said, there's a couple others. I think it's like, what, what's the name of the other one? I apologize, Luca. I am going to move you to the other chair. Hopefully you are not offended. Uh, but the other track of note, um, I think, yeah, Vampire Killer. I think that's what it's called. That's the track that starts the, the opening level, um, and I think is quite popular. So we'll come back for that one at some point. Um, but as I said, I'm going to try to keep the video game reaction playlist going. Admittedly, it's like hit or miss. Like, there's some which get a lot of reaction. Um, yeah, I, I reacted to the Donkey Kong Country tunes, um, Aquatic Ambience, and then the one from Donkey Kong Country 2, um, Sticker, is it Sticker Brush Symphony? Um, Sticker Bush, Sticker Bush Symphony, I think it is, actually. Um... Either way, those like, you know, a lot of people have interacted with those, whereas there's other video game reactions where it's like, you know, five views after like several months. So um, it is weird, again, how different games, you know, have more of like a cultural memory. Um, but yeah, I'm just going off the games that I played, so I'll keep reacting to them. Do let me know what you think of this one. Luca and I will see you next time. Peace.